Hello, this is Kimberly Scott from KimberlyScottScience.com and today we are going to be talking about slime. Slime is a wonderful non-Newtonian fluid. It stretches when it is a weak force and acts like a liquid and it breaks when it is a strong force and it acts more like a solid. If you leave it sitting on a table, eventually gravity just takes hold and it'll spread like a liquid. But if you drop it, you might get more of a bounce like a solid. So kids just have a lot of fun seeing what slime can do. You can make it thick, you can make it thin, you can do so many things with it. Do not be afraid to do a slime lesson with your students. I know it can be messy and sometimes we shy away from that mess but it is so worth it. So I'm gonna give you tips that I do in my classroom for our science and STEM with slime. So the first tip is to practice it at home. Go over your procedures, make sure you know your goal, so you know what the goal is for that slime lesson and what type of slime you want to make. Today we are focusing on the classic borax and glue slime, so that's what my tips are going to be for. Test the recipe, try different glues, and make sure you understand that slime. Don't let the first time you make slime be with your students. Make sure you are familiar with it so that you can better help them. Then look at what kind of supplies you think you are going to need. So one of the things that I would suggest is, and especially for the younger kids, have them mix the slime in a Ziploc bag. That makes it really easy. They can have the glue in there, have everything right in there. Then all they have to do is add their borax to it and then they just zip their bag and they start mixing. And then they'll be able to tell very easily when their slime is ready. And when you mix it, after they've mixed it and it seems like the slime is good, let it sit for a minute. I find letting it sit really helps to keep it from being so tacky and they typically have to play it with it in their hands for a little bit. And if it's sticking on the side of the baggie, have them reverse it on their hand, and then they can just peel the slime right off the bag. This one came off really well. Sometimes it'll be sticking on the bag and they just need to peel it off and start playing with it. And that's an easy way to do it. And when they're done with it, they just put it back in, reverse their bag, and it's all sealed up and ready to go. Another way you could do it is also with disposable cups. So if you are a science lab teacher, baggies would be a great way to do it. You could also do it in the cups. They can just stir it right there. If the cup gets really bad, they toss it. If the cup is still good, you could use it for another class. So think about disposable materials to make it quick and easy to move from class to class. Then you get to the point they're sitting here and they're mixing it and playing it at their tables. Put a plastic tablecloth down. I have a garbage bag down. You can use a plastic tablecloth when you're done. They just keep all the mess in there and they just roll it right up and throw it away. It also makes it easy if, if they have a runnier slime, they can just pour it right out onto that table and play with it. And then they can kind of mash it together and get it a little bit thicker. So definitely have some sort of plastic tablecloth down. The next recommendation I have is to mix your solutions first. So there's two solutions when you're dealing with the borax and glue slime. The first is the glue solution, which is the glue and water. You can mix a big container of that so it's all set to go for your classes all day. Then you don't have to mix it each time. It just takes up too much time. Then you can also have your borax and water solution mixed. You don't need as much of that. And so having those mixed means groups can just come up, you can give them some, they can take both solutions back, they mix them together, and they have their slime. Groups, if it's with older kids, they can make those two solutions themselves. So what happens with my class is our slime lesson is several days long because it is a complete unit that we do. So they mix their solutions and it really lasts through the whole time. It gives them enough. So each time they're making another batch of slime, they just go to their solutions, they pour out what they need, and then they mix it together. So that really is gonna help, and it helps them to understand too what is happening in making the slime. The next thing I would do is have laminated procedures and directions and solution cards. So this is what I give all of my students. 
and it is a laminated card with the steps for mix, mixing their solutions. So this would be the third solution that they're making where they get to choose their own glue. And then you'll see here I have these sitting on laminated cards. They're easy to clean off, they don't get messy, and it gives them a place to put that beaker or container that they're using. So right here the students would follow the steps for mixing the water, adding the borax, stirring it up, and then it goes right on that center circle so that their area is going to stay cleaner and that they don't mix it up with anything else. So laminating them makes it work for all of your classes. They just wipe it off and you're all set. And that way if slime gets on the paper too, it's not gonna stick because slime on paper does not go well together. Then the next thing would be to have some group roles. So different roles that I have is where there's a person that is the only one that can go and get supplies so that the supply area is not too crowded. I have somebody that's in charge of reading the directions and making sure the group does not go ahead. We also have somebody that's the recorder, so they're recording any data. So that way if somebody's busy measuring and they're not getting a chance to write things down, they've got somebody that they can refer to later. And I also always have one person in a group that is the only one that can come to me to ask for help. That way I'm not bombarded by a lot of people and I'm able to walk around the room a little bit more easily. So definitely have group roles when you are doing your slime. And lastly, have fun with it. There is going to be mistakes, there is going to be spills, and that's okay. The kids are gonna learn from their failures. So if they're mixing some stuff wrong and not getting it right, they're learning from that. You have those solutions you pre-mixed, pre you have enough of them. So therefore, if they make a mistake, you just say, okay, go get some more, follow those directions carefully, and they'll figure it out. So just be really patient with them because it is really worth it. And if you are looking to stop this activity up because slime don't just mix it up turn it into an investigation I have a complete slime unit and so this is what my laminated cards are for where they investigate they try a different glue and then they have a stem challenge along with it so a nice fun chemistry stem challenge and it takes us several days so I also have um, press and seal so when they're done we put press and seal over their containers their solutions so that the next day they can just take those solutions down take off the press and seal and they're ready to start mixing more slime again so have a great time making slime if you want to learn more about the glues be sure to head over to my blog where i have a whole blog written about how different glues work for slime i also have another blog that talks about how you can align it with the next generation science standards so it is a wonderful chemistry and properties of matter unit so have fun exploring slime.